Along with the samurai, ninja are one of the most famous figures of ancient Japan. There are many myths and legends about them, but unfortunately, hardly any reliable sources. However, it is believed that they were formerly employed as scouts, spies, saboteurs, or assassins in Japan. There are also some clues that suggest the ninja were a purely Buddhist order in search of nirvana, the liberation from repeated suffering, and rebirth. Their weapons are just as legendary as their history. Apparently, they were not afraid to use new inventions. Therefore, there is a whole range of strange weapons associated with them. The extent to which these devices were actually used is sometimes very controversial. Let's start with Tessin. The metal fan was popular because, of course, it wouldn't be recognized as a weapon at first glance. There were therefore many different versions of it. The simple ones only had outer parts made of metal, so that they could be used like a club when folded. The somewhat more sophisticated variant, on the other hand, was even able to cut. That's because the ends of the individual struts were sharpened, so you could easily surprise your opponents with them. Shuko the shuko consists of a ring made of leather with iron claws attached to it. It actually isn't just a weapon, but also an extremely useful tool for climbing. Wearing shuko on their hands, ninja could easily climb trees and even walls weren't a problem with the iron claws. But of course, the shuko also came in handy for combat. This makes the famous tiger claw known from Chinese kung fu look like child's play. If used to scratch an opponent's face, the sharp blades inflicted terrible wounds. They could also be used to parry enemy swords, but that was extremely risky. Ashiko This is basically the counterpart to the Shuko. In principle and construction, these two tools are very similar. The only difference is that the Ashiko were not worn on the hands, but on the feet of the ninja. The devices also make climbing much easier. On top of that, they ensure that kicks are extremely effective and can result in serious injuries. Chigiri Ki this was an extremely simple weapon. It was originally developed by farmers to defend themselves against attackers and worked similar to a flail used in agriculture. They simply attached a chain with an iron weight to a stick so that the weapon had a significantly higher impact than the usual flail with a wooden weight. A very similar weapon was also used in Europe during the Middle Ages. Tetsubishi this is another weapon that existed in a similar form in medieval Europe where it was known as a caltrop or crow's foot. In Japan, on the other hand, it was called a makabishi or tetsubishi. These sharp, spiked weapons were either made of iron or the dried seed pods of the water chestnut. Since they could penetrate the sandals of the soldiers at that time, they were mainly used to slow down enemy troops or stop them for a while if they were retreating. To do this, they were simply scattered on the floor. However, they were also used as throwing weapons. Ninjato this is a straight short sword that is said to have been part of the standard equipment of the ninja. It was short enough to be carried on a ninja's back and be drawn from there. A longer sword like a katana would have restricted the ninja when he was climbing, and if carried on his back, he wouldn't have been able to draw it due to the long blade. Rumor has it that the ninjato was often just a shortened katana. In order to save resources, the ninja sometimes took the swords of their victims and made ninjatos out of them. Fukia this is a Japanese blowgun that was used to shoot poisoned darts. A typical ninja blowgun was only about 50 centimeters long. To make sure that the arrow hit its target, the weapon could only be used within a very short distance. Nowadays, the fukia is still used for sports similar to archery. Kusari Fundo The combination of a long chain, kusari, and a heavy weight, fundo, at the end results in a powerful weapon with which the ninja could defend themselves against their enemies. The Kusari Fundo was helpful in areas where wearing a sword was prohibited. It could easily be hidden and was mainly used for self-defense. Kusari Gama To create this weapon, all the ninja had to do was to attach a Kusari Fundo to a sickle. This is how the Kusari Gama was invented. The combination of throw, cut, and chain weapon makes the Kusari Gama very versatile. To use it, the sickle was held in one hand while the other swung the weighted chain. This way, the ninja could keep opponents with swords at a distance so that they couldn't use their weapon. Then, the weighted chain could be used to disarm them. Baku Hatsu Gama And there is even another form of this type of weapon. With the Baku Hatsugama, instead of the weight, other things are attached to the end of the chain. For example, small containers with shrapnel that opened upon impact, poisons, and even small containers with explosives were used. If the ninja didn't have enough money or wanted to be a bit more inconspicuous, the containers could also be filled with blinding powder. Tekokagi 
These were fearsome iron claws that could perform various tasks. They looked like a bear's paw and were probably made from sickles or similar objects of utility. They could not only be deployed to attack opponents, but were also well suited to parry blows and disarm opponents. Shuriken This term includes all short Japanese throwing weapons, and not just the well-known ninja stars. Actually, this weapon exists in surprisingly many shapes, from stars to swastika and from bolts to ordinary knives. The shuriken were carried in hidden pockets in the ninja's jackets or pants. Sometimes they were even smeared with poison so that in case the enemy survived the injury itself, he would still die of poisoning or infection. However, the weapon only had a range of a few meters to inflict real damage, which is why it was mainly used to stop pursuers by showering them with shuriken. Metsubushi This was a kind of powder that was used to blind opponents. It usually consisted of ash, pepper, dirt, and flour. In order to cause real damage, fine ground glass could be mixed into it as well. The powder was kept in hollow eggs, bamboo tubes, or other small containers. It was deployed to blind attackers and flee from them. Kakute This ring was usually worn on the middle finger so that the spikes were hidden in the hand. Especially female ninja, the kunochi, preferred this weapon. Sometimes the spikes were also dipped in poison. The weapon could be used to attack an enemy when he least suspected it. For example, by suddenly scratching his face or slitting his throat. The rings were also well suited as climbing aids. Shiko Mizue The next weapon is a hidden sword. It looks like a walking stick and was mainly used during the Meiji era when carrying swords was prohibited. It was also worn by government officials and samurai who disagreed with the ban but did not want to be punished. Sai The Sai looked like a fork or trident, but the prong in the middle was three times as long as the other two. They were mostly used in pairs. This way, they were great weapons for a lot of different techniques. In addition to parry, stab, blow, and thrust techniques, disarmament techniques could be used as well. This way, the sword of the opponent could be intercepted and broken with a targeted blow under tension. A third Sai was often worn on the body. It mainly functioned as a backup so the ninja could throw one Sai at the enemy and still fight with two weapons. Tanto This is a typical Japanese combat sword. It had a slightly curved blade, is single-edged, and less than 30 centimeters long. It was originally part of the equipment of the samurai and mainly used by them for self-defense. But the ninja seemed to have taken a fancy to it as well. After all, it was perfect for assassinations. There were many different forms of Tanto. They were also used for ritual suicide, seppuku. Kagi Nawa This grappling hook was attached to a 10-meter long rope and used as a tool to climb walls or secure boats. It was used by all kinds of soldiers, the samurai, and the ninja. Even though it was intended as a tool, it could, of course, also be used as a weapon. Shikoro this was a tool mainly used to open things. The small double-edged saw was also very light and easily concealable. Ninjas didn't have a clear distinction between tools and weapons. They could use the shikoro to cut open a fence or make a hole inside a wooden wall to look through and also to cut ropes. Of course, it could also be used to fend off attackers, which makes the shikoro one of the most versatile gadgets. And a shinobi would usually carry three of these on any mission. As you can see, most of these ninja weapons were small or made out of everyday objects like sickles and seed pods or hidden in fans and canes. In contrast to this, samurai often used huge, menacing weapons like the tetsubo. This staff was made from iron and is one of the least famous weapons of the samurai. There are different sizes of these clubs, but their common feature are studs at one end. Some of them were shaped like a baseball bat and others were straight but they all required a lot of strength and balance, because recovering from a miss was a difficult task due to the heavy weight of the Tetsubo. Other huge weapons of the samurai were their great swords, Nodachi, and their over 2.3 meter long bows, Yumi. As you can see when having a look at this huge selection of weapons, the ninja were quite different to other fighters such as the samurai, whose weapon selection was much more limited. As I said before, a lot of the information about the ninja hasn't been proven yet. Therefore, the information presented in this video should be taken with a grain of salt. Still, I hope you liked this video. Until next time, bye!